Hello. This is a video in response to Zach. The video you made concerning the Roman Catholic teachings of Mary needs to be addressed for several reasons. First of all, Mary is indeed the mother of God. If her child, Jesus, was not truly God, then salvation is destroyed. Hence, Nestorius was condemned rightly in 431 AD at the Council of Ephesus. However, you are incorrect to state that this teaching is new. In Luke 1 verse 43, Elizabeth greets Mary as the mother of my Lord. This might be hard for you to accept Zach, but this is not some unclear confession of Elizabeth regarding the deity of Christ. Furthermore, the Catholic Church has always called her this, and it appears in an Eastern Christian, and therefore not Roman prayer to Mary in at least 250 AD. The prayer is called the Satuum Presidium. This prayer reads, Beneath your compassion we take refuge, O Mother of God, do not despise our petitions in time of trouble, but rescue us from danger, only pure, only blessed one. Therefore Zach, your dates are off on both your first and second points. Prayers offered to Mary also appear in a typological form in Holy Scripture. In John 2 at the wedding at Cana, she passes along a request regarding the lack of wine. Jesus knows about this shortage, yet waits for her to ask. He fulfills her request. This mirrors the situation in 2 Kings 2, where Solomon's mother is asked to make a request of the king, because he will not reject her intercession. The person who asks this can ask Solomon himself, yet he does not do so directly. Thus, in John 2, the same image is set up, for here we have a feast on the third day. The one greater than Solomon will listen to the one greater than Bathsheba. I'm not here going to defend Mary's immaculate conception, partly because I do not accept it, and partly because I do not know much of the evidence for it, however, it was only declared dogma in 1854 AD. Martin Luther accepted it in the Middle Ages, and it was part of the thought of the Franciscan school of theology. Your fourth point is even more interesting. You say that the Roman Catholic Church established this doctrine in 1950 AD, yet this is not the case. Her bodily assumption, as well as her title as Queen of Heaven, is in Revelation 12. It also exists by far earlier, and is believed by the Eastern Orthodox Church as well, though they believe she died or fell asleep before this event. And, even better, Martin Luther believed it and even preached on it near the end of his life. Point 5. Mary is the mother of the church, because she gave birth to the Godman Jesus Christ, whose flesh and blood the church shares through the sacraments. The church is the mystical body of Christ, and Mary was his mother. Again, it is a confession, that has been in the church for almost two millennia, and was declared in defense of the sacraments and salvation, as well as a biblical view of the person of Jesus. Your aside here about Newsweek is interesting, but pointless. The Roman Church has not declared Mary as co-redemptrix. Mary is acknowledged even in the Lutheran churches as an advocate for the Church in the Augsburg Confession. She is also called comediatrix by the Eastern Church insofar as she gave assent to the new Adam to be born from her womb. But comediatrix can go too far. However, your beef is with the pronouncements of the Roman Church Magisterium, not with some of the people in the church. Your titles are just impossible to get through in this short video. Needless to say, she is the mother of the members of Christ, because she is the mother of Jesus Christ. As John 2 and Revelation 12 show, she is the Queen of Heaven and thus, over all things. If you think John 2 is a slam on her, because Jesus calls her woman, be careful. He says the same thing at the cross, when his time does come. She is only called woman in John's gospel with no qualifier, and it is the same gospel where Christ is called the man. Luke's gospel also shows a relationship between the human will of Jesus and the will of Mary through their use of the same phrase in Austin to God's will. Let it be to me. This helps to stress Christ as the new Adam and Mary as the new Eve, she is spouse of the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to Luke 1, and how she conceives Jesus. Also, if she were the Queen of Heaven and the Mother of the Church, it stands to reason, that she is their Queen as well. Especially since she is to be the Mother to Saint John, thus showing a form of authority over him. She is the Church in miniature, she must be the Holy Mother of God or the salvation and merit Christ wins is only what a man wins, and the blood and merit of a man cannot save anyone. She is the mother of divine grace because of who her son is. 
Jesus is grace from God to sinners, and she is his mother. She is the seed of wisdom, because the pre-incarnate Christ is called wisdom in Old Testament scriptures. That his presence moves from the temple to a womb in Luke should indicate this. Also, the language for the Holy Spirit overshadowing her is temple and ark language in the Septuagint. She is the cause of our joy in so far as she assented to God's plan, to bring his son into the world, thus undoing Eve's disobedience. Look man, I know you want to be pious towards Jesus, and so you as many of your Protestant friends do, will downplay the Virgin Mary. This is sad. I would highly suggest you read Francis Pieper's Christian Dogmatics Volume 2, and concentrate on the section dealing with the person of Christ. I have yet to see a reformed Christian deal with Piper, as he biblically and logically rips Calvin and Zwingli's Christology to shreds. What you say of Mary you say of the human nature of Christ. What you say of the human nature of Christ, you must say of regenerate man, barring of course those things dealing with the personal union directly. What is Christ's by nature, is ours by grace.